So this is one of my favorite IoT projects, which is adding Wi-Fi to the existing doorbell so anytime it rings, I get a push notification sent to my phone. That's it. That's all this does. And then from there, I can, you know, pull up my Wise cams and check and see who's at the door. S simple as that. And to accomplish this, I use the trig board because it's pretty much ready to go out of the box for this sort of project. Don't even have to write any code at all. So we do have to add some circuitry in between the trig board sensor input and the doorbell, and then it's ready to go. And I'm going to show you exactly how I built this in my house here. But first, it's important to understand how the doorbell works. So here in my house, which by the way, this could be different for you, so it's important to actually go and take some measurements and fully understand how the doorbell works so you don't blow anything up. So in my basement here, I've got a step-down transformer that brings the AC mains 120 down to 16 volts. And I actually did measure this. And also, it's important to disconnect uh, the breaker that powers this transformer before you go and wire anything in. Uh, but anyway, we've got 16 volts AC here, and then it's a simple circuit. It's just when you press the button outside, it powers or energizes a coil right here that pulls in a little plunger and rings the chimes. That's it. And actually, it, there's two chimes in there. It pulls it one way, and then it's spring-loaded back to ring the second chime. And that's all it does. So how do we interface to 16 volts AC into the trig board? Well, the trig board works great with a dry contact sort of thing. So like a, a relay, just a contact closing. That's why it's really good for monitoring doors and windows with those magnetic uh, door sensors. So we need to somehow convert this 16 volts AC into a dry contact that just closes or opens. And the first thing I thought about using was a cheap relay I found on Amazon. This is a 24 volt AC relay. So all I had to do was just wire, tap wires on top of these terminals where the doorbell is right into this relay and then on the other end, just go straight to the trig board's input, and then the job's done. And I thought that was going to work out great, but it does not because we only have 16 volts here, which is not quite enough to energize the coil of this 24-volt relay. Now, you could try to find a 16-volt relay, but they're not very common. That's, that's not a normal coil voltage for these these relays. So then I started looking around in my junk, and I found this uh, electromagnet which is great. This is a 24 volt DC electromagnet. So with a, a diode just to bring the AC half wave, rectify it down to some kind of DC for this and a couple caps, I energized the coil, which pulled in a little reed switch that's taped in there. And then the output, you know, across that reed switch connects to the trig board. And then we've got our dry contact that closes when the do doorbell rings. The problem with this though, and I do have this fully uh, documented up on the docs page for this project, but the problem with this was that it's just barely kind of pulling that reed switch in, and after a couple days of use, it rings fine when you just push the button in like a normal person, but most of the time I don't have people like that. It's like the UPS guy or the FedEx guy that just runs up to the door, door throws the box down, and just whacks the button. Like it's like a, a millisecond, just ping. And I mean, it barely even rings the doorbell. It's just like ding, you know. So uh, that was not going to work. So I went back to the drawing board and found a 12-volt DC uh, relay. And this is what I came up with. So what I came up with was something very simple. So we've got that 16 volts AC coming in right at those terminals. So we'll just tap right off of there. We'll create a DC bus, nothing special. We'll just use a single rectifier diode. I think I used a 1N4007 for this and I've got all of this documented up on the docs which I'll show you here in a second. So that takes the AC like that and then half wave rectifies it. We'll add some big caps in there. I think I've got two 220s in there. And it's important to watch the voltage rating of these capacitors. Mine, I think, are spec for 25 volts, which should be plenty for the 16 volts input here. This is RMS. So we've got peaks of like 23 volts or so. So you want to make sure you've got a decent voltage or high voltage spec on these caps that's higher than that. So then the DC bus here feeds a 12 volt regulator, 
0.1 microfarad on the output of that. So we've got a nice 12 volts DC now at the output of this regulator, which energizes a relay coil. And don't forget your flyback diode. I just used the same diode as here, a 1N4007. And then this relay here, uh, normally open contact on the output, is what goes to trig board. So it's pretty simple. And the reason this works so well is because we've got this high voltage coming in, the 16 volts AC. We've got the DC bus. So the idea, you know, is that if somebody quickly presses the button, it's going to charge this up and then slowly discharge through these caps, but keep the 12 volts up long enough so that the trig board can detect it, which it works great. So if you just tap it, we've got 12 volts there long enough to keep this contact here closed. And that's pretty much it. And you can actually see this work, or I should say hear it work, because when you press the button, and then like maybe a couple hundred milliseconds later, you hear the relay click off. So it's like, you ding ding, and then after. And let's just take a quick look here at the docs page for this project. There's a lot of useful information up here. Uh, you can see the really uh, detailed schematic down here. And one thing I forgot to mention is that there's actually another capacitor here on the output. I think it's a 100 microfarad big electrolytic capacitor on the output as well. And I only noticed that because I also have a nice picture here showing my... Uh, <laughs> horrific install of this thing. So I just kind of soldered the whole thing together here. You see the first rectifier diode is right there and then that feeds the input to the regulator on the back side. You can see the two parallel bulk capacitors, uh, then ground. Everything is tied back to this ground lead here. And then the output right there feeds the uh, coil of the relay and then there's the flyback diode and there's that 100 microfarad capacitor and then in between on the back there is also a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and then the dry contact output just feeds the trig board so that's actually pretty easy and for programming it's super easy we don't even have to do anything uh, let's launch the configurator here so I'm actually working in Safari so we got to make sure we're in Google Chrome for this all right, now I'm going to click connect from Chrome. I'm gonna press and hold the wake button on the trig board and we should see the LED flash. Okay, now the LED is flashing. We see here trig board, we'll go ahead and pair to it. And if you're new to the trig board, this is very easy. It's connecting to the trig board over a Bluetooth connection. So we've got uh, we put in all of our parameters here, loaded all in uh, from this little page here. So we've got to put in the Wi-Fi, SSID, and password we're going to use. Uh, the trig board name, which in this case we'll just make it doorbell. And we're going to wake on the contact opening. Even though when you press the doorbell, it's going to close that contact, we're actually going to wake when the contact opens back up or when you release the button. And the, and the reason for that is, is in that case where somebody just quickly taps the button because by the time the trig board wakes, it might already have been released. So I found that this works great uh, when you set this to contact open. And we're going to send a message, has rung. So we get it on the phone as doorbell has rung. And that's all we really have to do here. And then we've got a lot of options here for push notifications or you know other events we want to occur when the doorbell rings. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use pushover. And if we go back to the docs page here and click on supported services, you could see all of those different ways you can send out push notifications or other things like send it to if this then that and make it turn your lights on when the doorbell rings. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. But in this case, we're going to keep it simple and use pushover. So head over there, you set up your account, follow these directions here. You get those two keys, you get the uh, user key and then your API token key. Those two things copy and paste right back over into the configurator, save it, and you're good to go. And I know it shows Wi-Fi disconnected, but if I do save and connect, you'll see it go green and give us an IP address. Now I'm going to disconnect here because everything looks good. And if you just want to simply test the trig board at this point, all we have to do is press the wake button.
and we see we've got a push notification on the phone showing doorbell button was pressed there. So we know at least the push notification service works, the Wi-Fi works, everything's good there. So now when the dry contact input here it opens, we're going to get a push notification saying the doorbell has rung. And let me show you that now. Okay, so we're over at the doorbell now, and I'm just going to take the cover off and show you how this was wired. And right inside there, it's kind of hard to see, but those two leads come down and are wired straight into the two terminals where the two wires are that come in. So right in parallel there with the doorbell solenoid. And here's that little plunger that pulls forward, so it hits that first chime, and then, actually, it's this one here. So it flies forward, hits that chime, and then back on that one. So uh, this doorbell actually has three terminals up there, one for like a second push button somewhere like in the backyard, and that would only pull in this one. So I guess like if you heard only one chime, you would know it's that button versus the one that hits both. So let me install the trig board now and I'll show you the whole thing in action. So now I can just ring the doorbell and I'll just show you how sensitive this is to a simple little tap of the doorbell. So you see it woke up the trig board there with that dry contact and then we got the push notification on the phone, doorbell has rung. And of course I've got uh, trig board also monitoring the front door so when I shut that we then will get that push notification as well that the front door has closed. Pretty cool huh? So now let me just button this whole thing up and show you the final install. Just kind of tucking everything in that 3D printed case. Okay and then we'll put the cover back on. Cool and that's all there is to this project so hopefully you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.